The reason why we can thank God for things is because we do believe that God can work something good right. out of them, and He can work something good in us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. just cannot become what God wants you to be if everything in your life is cushy. Hi, friends. Welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where Joyce teaches the Word of God in her practical, no-nonsense way. And my friends and I talk about the real stuff of living it, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley and Jay, three friends who are all in very different stages of life, but know the importance of having honest, loving women around you. And when we need a little extra help, our wonderful friend, Miss Joyce, is here like she is today to walk They're us needing through. more and more help. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, it's it's more true. More. There is no <laughs> denying. <laughs> yeah. There's so much truth Pretty soon it. it's going to be like an everyday occurrence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right no, now, I'm... it's once a month. So. <laughs> so consider yourself one of the girls. Come on in here and let's talk it out. Last week, we started by the, the fruit of the Spirit, beginning with talking about the fruit of the Spirit. And that is all about what God's Spirit gives us, but we're responsible to help cultivate it and make it yeah. grow in our life. And yeah. Joyce, we hit some really good stuff last week, and uh, you're going to help us finish a long list of all the rest. <laughs> yeah, I started to say, I told you earlier, with no way are we going to get to all those. <laughs> last week, if, if you missed it, we talked about um, peace, patience, and humility, and it, it honestly, it was kind of ouchy. Yeah, it's, it's painful. A little, a little painful. But, Jay, just for you, we've, I see. we've got some guacamole. I see we've got chips. guacamole. Because she talked about being an avocado. That's her fruit. Oh. <laughs> Oh, so we have six fruit left, we and do. I can promise you we're not going to get to all We of do. Them. We have love, joy, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, Ooh. and eek, self-control. Mm. Well, I have something funny we want to show the people. My youngest grandson, I have 12 grandchildren, and my youngest one, a little over two years old, his mother's teaching him the fruit of the Spirit, and you have to look at this and see what he said. Can we say the fruit of the Spirit? Love, self-control, joy, self-control, peace, self-control, patience, self-control, kindness, self-control, goodness, self-control, gentleness, self-control, faithfulness, faithfulness, and (laughs) self-control. I think that's hilarious. Every one of them was self-controlled till he got to self-control, and then he wouldn't say anything. So. <laughs> Isn't that the way it is with that's self-control? How I feel. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. I, you actually have to use it. Then yeah. it's like, nah. I'll tell you all about I'll it until about I have it. to. I thought it was funny. At two and a half, he already knows every one of them takes self-control. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> that that is so fun. I I love to see the way children. Um, assimilate these things because they really pick up on a lot of stuff but that little twist is always very fun and if I was going to talk about the fruit of the spirit I might do the opposite and just leave out (laughs) (laughs) self-control pretend it doesn't list yeah yeah. yeah. it is pretty important though you you talked before Joyce about how the the bookends yeah I was going to mention that love and self-control are so important I think all of the fruit of the spirit comes out of love yeah I mean you don't you're not going to do any of the rest of them if you don't love but then self-control, the last one, is like what holds them all in place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like sometimes love tells me to be kind, mm-hmm. but I have to use self-control to be kind. Yeah. yeah. And love always tells us to be humble, but we sure need self-control for mm-hmm. that. So, and so yeah, the baby's I, got it right. <laughs> I, consider uh-huh. the, I consider the two of them to be two that we need to talk about a lot because yeah. really the rest of them, if you've got the love and the self-control, and you have a desire to do the rest of them, it's pretty easy. Yeah. (laughs) Let me ask you this question, because a lot of people talk about the gifts of the Spirit. You know, we... We all either want the gifts or we're afraid of the gifts because we don't understand them, right. whatever that might be. But I think it's really important to distinguish between the two. So we're going to start right now with a, a little clip from your teaching that just helps explain this so well, the difference okay. between the gifts and the fruit. Take a listen. In God's kingdom, we are not known or applauded by the gifts that God gives us. But what God looks for is fruit. He looks for character. He says you will know them by their fruit. The world admires gifts. 
Boy, if you can do something that the world think is great, you're in. But God admires character. Gifts are easy, they're given. We're not better than one another because we can do something that someone else can't do. We must learn to live deeper. Either make the tree sound healthy and good and its fruit sound healthy and good, or make the tree rotten, diseased, and bad and its fruit rotten, diseased, and bad. For the tree is known and recognized and judged by its fruit. Fruit. We need to learn how to be fruit inspectors. We need to live deeper. We need to look deeper at the people's lives that we're around and the people that we get hooked up with. You know, a peach tree, you know that a peach tree is a peach tree because it bears peaches, right? A peach tree doesn't go around with a megaphone yelling, I'm a peach tree! I'm a peach tree! Yo, oh, look at me! I'm a peach tree! Yeah, well, where's your peaches? Well, that's what happens with Christians. Oh, I'm a Christian! I say hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. I cast out devils, whoa-ho, I'm a Christian. Yeah, well, where's your fruit? You're known by your fruit. Are you helping anybody? Are you patient? Are you loving people? Are you a giver? Are you quick to apologize? Are you gentle? Are you faithful? Are you sticking with something and refusing to give up on anything? How do you treat people? Those are the things that are important to God. Somebody say amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that you went deeper yeah. with the fruit of the Spirit because it's easy to run through them, love, joy, mm -hmm. peace, patience, kindness, and just, just kind of gloss over them. But you got into forgiveness. I mean, it, the things that come out of the fruit are the things that we have to do. So when you're talking about living deeper, I, I think that's so important and not just seeking after those gifts, right. but being who he wants us to be. Well, I went through a, a, a phase. I was in the church when there was a phase going through about the gifts of the Spirit. And everybody wanted to know what their gift was. Mm -hmm. What's your gift? What's my gift? Let's compare gifts. And <laughs> God just began to show me that it's, you don't know people by their gifts. Right. I mean, my gift to teach and preach is a gift that God gave me. You know, so if you read in Romans 12, it says, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Mm -hmm. And it talks about the gifts. And so we have to realize that, you know, Jay sings, I preach, Ginger has a lot of creative gifts, Aaron has a lot of creative gifts. We don't all have the same gifts, mm -hmm. but they're not our gifts. Right. Yeah. They're really gifts that God has given us, mm -hmm. so we don't need to compare ourselves with one another. Yes, we want to use our gifts, but gifts are given. Fruit is not given. Mm -hmm. The seed of fruit is given, but it has to grow. Mm -hmm. And like, for example, um, humility is a fruit that only grows under trial. Oh, you that's can't, the truth. You can't. <laughs> or, 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 comes again. I'm sorry. Patience. I'm sorry. I had it wrong. Patience. Patience. Oh, no. yeah. It comes from a Greek word that says you. It only grows under yeah. trial, and that's yeah. why people don't ever want to pray for patience no, because they know if they pray for it. patience, you'll get a problem yeah. mm -hmm. that you have to solve. I actually had and, that on on the way here today. <laughs> why is that? That whenever we talk about something, yes, we're going to start getting. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Tempted or tried or just to, just God saying, are you actually going to do this or are you just going right. to talk about it to somebody yeah. else? Yeah. So I had two people pull out in front of me today on my way to work so hard that I had to slam on the brakes. Everything went flying to the front of the car. You know, the first time you're like, okay, thank you, God. The second time you're like, what is going on? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so trying that patience, I'll tell you, I, and I'll be honest, I, I did not pass with flying colors. You didn't pass. No, do, I, we, do we have to go back and talk I, about patience again? I, well, I'll just keep working on it personally. Yeah. <laughs> this is such a big thing. But I think, I think all point. of us will work on all of them yeah. Yeah. at different times in our life. I thought it was so interesting when you talk about that, how... The fruit is what is most important. That's what we need to focus on. When you look at scriptures, that's what Jesus is teaching us to do. He's not 
he's not telling me here, Aaron, how, here is how you be a more creative person at your job. He cares, and I can find scripture to help me be a leader, but he cares more about the fruit in my life and teaching me to be a person after his own heart, not mm-hmm. here's how to do your job. Yeah. I think it's so powerful how you just talked about, like, we've all, I've heard this all my life about gifts come without repentance. Like, mm-hmm. you can get a gift, like, whomever, because, you know, you see people that you know are doing awful things in the world and they're just so gifted yeah. to do certain things. It's like, how did they? But you have to remind yourself, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> how did they get to do it like that? Like, you know, and, and I'm like this. And so, but not comparing the gifts, Mm -hmm. but also understanding that the gift is that. It's the actual word. It's a gift. It was given from God. But the fact that fruit is to cultivate that, that is really our responsibility. It's really our responsibility to really do that and and practice that those bookends of love and self-control. A lot of times, if you notice, though, people who have real strong gifts that put them in the public eye, Mm -hmm. if they don't have fruit, if they don't treat people good, Many, many times they end up failing, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and their lives fall apart very yeah. publicly. And I know God. God spoke to me when my ministry started getting bigger, and I was on TV, and we were having thousands of people come to the meetings. And He said, "I want you to always remember that however many people you can help, that's exactly how many you can hurt." Wow, mm-hmm. that's really good. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the more people you're in front of, the more responsibility you have to make sure that. You're living the life, not just telling other people how to live the life. I wrote a book recently called Loving People That Are Hard in Love. A couple weeks ago, I had an occasion to get really mad at somebody. And uh, I was mad for maybe three hours. And then I remembered my book. (laughs) (laughs) You have a lot to help you with that. (laughs) I wrote a book about that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yes, I have to forgive. Yeah. And, you know, if you talk about, this is what I think. I think that love really is how you treat people. Yeah. It's, it's giving, it's, it's kindness, it's gentleness, mm-hmm. it's humility. It's really all the rest of the Spirit. So I talk about yeah. them like bookends. All the fruit of the Spirit come out of love, but they're held in place by self-control. Mm-hmm. That's so yeah. good. You know, That's love would require me to be humble, but if I don't feel like being humble, then I need self-control yeah. Yeah. to do what I feel. And I really would love to see people study the fruit of the Spirit more because I think it is extremely important. I mean, yeah. when Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit. Yep. That's what he mm-hmm. said. I mean, we're the only Jesus that people are going to see. Right. I think when in your clip you said this and then saying that again, I think one thing that stands out to me is This is where we as Christians are not doing our job in the world right now because people are so angry and upset and things are so polarized and there's, you are not seeing Christians act by their fruit. Mm -hmm. We are just as guilty of name calling and Mm -hmm. treating people poorly. But if we were to do what Christ has called us to do as the body of Christ and act like the fruit, what would our world look like right now? That doesn't mean the heart issues are going to go away, but wow, we could have some really good conversations and, and be should Actually, if we would have been acting like we should have all along, we probably wouldn't have the situations. Mm. Yeah, that's true. That's good. That we have in the world right now. Yeah. And that, yeah. That's always been my pet peeve, I guess. God has really called me to help people not just know, know Christ and be born again, but to live the life yeah. that He wants them to live. Yeah. And that requires spiritual maturity, and spiritual maturity requires self-control mm-hmm. and the fruit of the Spirit is a big part of that. You will know them by their fruit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we are God's representatives. The Bible says that He makes His appeal to the world through us. And I think it's 2 yeah. Corinthians 5.20. So just think about that. He's making His appeal to the world through us. Yeah. And so I love it when I don't even have to ask somebody if they're a Christian. Yeah. If I can tell they are by their behavior. And yeah. that really does start with love. It does. Like you mm-hmm. said, it, it, it kind of is all of those other things rolled up into what love is. And and I'm so grateful that the Bible describes all of these things for us and, and equips us in a way if we if we choose to use it. Like the, the love chapter, first Corinthians thirteen, talks about the fact that love is patient, love is kind. Mm-hmm. It right. mm-hmm. it takes all those other fruits of the spirit and and love is the foundation of all of it. So let let me ask you all this. When when love is hard to find in your life, when love is hard to come by, how do you stir it up? What do you guys do? 
Well, I've studied it so much now because I did things wrong for a lot of years, and I was an unhappy Christian, and Christians should not be unhappy. Mm. We should be the happiest people, the most content yeah, people right. on the face of the earth. And I was not content, and I was not happy. And it's interesting, if you really ask God a question, if, you're, if you really want the answer, he'll give you one. Mm -hmm. And I asked the Lord one day, why am I so unhappy? And he said, you're selfish. <laughs> mm. <Well. laughs> That's and, an answer. You know, that, yeah. Love is not self-seeking. Yeah. Love is all about trusting God to take care of you while you take care of other people. So I've studied love so much that I, it's, it's been a priority for me for a, a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that I always hit it 100%. But I know, I think you have to know the importance of it. And if you really know the importance of anything, you're more likely to do it whether you feel like it or not, yeah. Yeah. than if you just, if it's just, a, you know, we love everything. We love ice cream. We love God. We love church. We love our shoes, you know. <laughs> but there's, there's a difference in the agape love. Yeah. He's calling us to love as he loves. Yeah. And every one of those fruit we see in God's character. He's kind. Mm -hmm. He's gentle. You know, he, he's for all those things yeah. that love is. So... He's not asking us to do anything that Jesus didn't come mm -hmm. and do. Yeah. And not only that, he helps us do it if we yeah. Yeah. cry out to him. You know, when I had that thing happen a couple of weeks ago, it was like, because I know now how important it is to forgive. I mean, I know it. I've taught on it so much, preached on it so much, studied it so much wrote so many books on it, read so many books on it. It's like, really, the Word of God will save you. Yeah. It says in James that the Word of God will save your soul. Mm -hmm. And the Word of God will change you and it will save you. But it's not, you can't just hear it for 20 minutes on Sunday morning. You have to be a diligent student mm -hmm. of the Word of God. I'm yeah. working on a little project right now called 40 Things the Word of God Does for You. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing, but it can't... You have to know it by revelation. Yeah. And, and you have to learn to meditate on the Word of God. And so, yeah. and I just pray that people would understand that, that if, if, you, if you would take 30 minutes diligently every day and study the Word, and then maybe another 30 minutes throughout the day meditating on the Word. And meditate just means to roll over and over in your mind. And I tell people, if you know how to worry, you know how to meditate. Mm -hmm. And only you meditate on the Word of God. Well, like... Yeah. Philippians 4, 6 is my go-to place when I get anxious or worried. Mm -hmm. Immediately, I'll start meditating on that scripture. And so I think if people are finding it hard to do, they need to either get their Bible out and look up the scriptures if they don't know them, or mm -hmm. if they've studied it enough, they will know them, and they'll yeah. the Holy Spirit brings them to your mind. It's yeah. like they pop up when you need them. Yeah. I, I did what you said, too, uh, and I think it's so important is when we're missing something in particular in our life to to study it in the Bible, to look for it, and, mm -hmm. and to ask God for more of it. And I remember a time where, uh, you know how the world is, and I just wasn't seeing a lot of love around me. And I was saying, God, you know, where where is all the love mm -hmm. that you're filling the world with? And I remember very clearly, like you did, I, I remember just this feeling of you start sharing more of it and you'll find more of it around you. Right. And that, it, it comes down so much to what we do in our own life when we're looking for it outside of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. God wants to start in us. Yeah, I've noticed whenever I'm feeling like I'm not receiving it or if I'm feeling like I'm not really giving it out, mm -hmm. I immediately go to the fact that somehow I'm disconnected from him. Yeah. 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 Like there's a disconnection yeah. because I, I usually stop and like reflect on the fact that God is love. Right. And then, like, it's that simple. Yeah. Like it, God is love. And if, if I'm feeling any lack in myself or if I'm feeling like nobody loves me or, you know, like, or I'm not, I don't like anybody. Like, honestly, you know, like <laughs> then I'm like, I'm, I, so I'm not connected to, to, to God. Yeah. I'm not connected to yeah. him. Like I need to. So I will like pull back, Si you know, meditate on the scripture, meditate on his love, and ask him simply just to fill me up. Don't you think joy is the same way? Yeah. As one of the fruit of the Spirit? If, yeah. When we don't have joy, it's exactly what you yeah. said also. We need to reconnect with him. It's, it's a disconnection because the, all of the fruit, are they're him. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's him. And if I'm lacking in any of them, 
it means that I am lacking him. And and that's the harsh reality is like, sure. no matter how much I towed around, I'm a Christian, which honestly, these days, what I'm finding out with a lot of people that I've been interacting with after going through these this past season of my life, because I've been very different with how I've approached people. Like, I'm way less judgmental. I'm way less, I'm way less Jesus pushing, you know, I'm way less that. And I really want the fruit to, to show. Like, and, and so a lot of that means I've shut up a lot. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't say much of nothing, but I let people talk to me. I let, and, and what I'm noticing is that people are gravitating more to me. Like, I don't have to tell them I'm a Christian because honestly, the word Christian these days, a lot of people don't like it. Like, it's a deflector to people. And so the fact that I, I'm learning how to cultivate the joy and cultivate the mm-hmm. love, man, in this season where I felt the least amount of love, I'm like, God, let your love just show through me that so many people are drawing towards me that need love. I'm like, huh? what about me? Yeah. Okay, I hear you. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, what about me feeling it? But like, God is like teaching me how to love people. And I'm getting so much more fulfillment from that that cultivation and being able to give sure. it out to people. Mm-hmm. I think I had a similar experience to you last year about the same the same topic of love. I was praying and every, the world was on fire and like, God, what are you doing here? What Show me something. I need to know what... You're still here, right? And so he brought the word love up to me. And so I just went through the gospels and just read all about what does what is Jesus saying about love and how is he acting that out? And... He does it just like you're saying, Jay. He's going and sitting with the least of these, and he's not judging, and he's not um, criticizing, and mm-hmm. he's so humble yeah. and gracious, and not. He doesn't have all these words to say because I kept saying, thinking like, I need to have paragraphs of paragraphs of encouragement <laughs> to tell people, and he just was with them where they were. But he's he's also so honest. Yeah, yeah. You know when when somebody's yes. not doing what they need to do, he will let them know mm-hmm. and in a few words, really well chosen, very straightforward, but still in love. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love the way he communicates because yeah. it's not like whatever you say goes. No. It's this is truth, so I will stand up for what yeah. is right, but it's not I don't want to make anybody upset. No. But I'll still love you through this. Yes. Yeah. And I so that's kind of what I learned the past year, but I love the verse that you shared first Corinthians. Love feels really big to me. Like that's a really big concept to grasp. Mm-hmm. So I like that one because it says, here's what that means. Here's yeah. your definition of love as like a checklist. So are you being this? No. Are you being that? <laughs> no. I got one on the list. So let's try you for another one today. But that's kind of a practical thing I like to do. Yeah. yeah. I think if a person did nothing but focus on love for the rest of their life. Oh, we'd be busy. <laughs> well, to be honest, I don't think you would have any other sin problems. Mm. I totally agree. Yeah. And yeah. Because if you if you walked in line, God doesn't sin, mm. and He is love. Mm-hmm. And so I think that every every sin somewhere is because you're not paying attention mm-hmm. to love. Yeah. Well, we mentioned joy a little bit. I I love joy. Joy is just one of those really important things. And sometimes when we're so far down, joy just seems unattainable. But we have to remember that God doesn't talk about joy the same way He talks about happiness mm-hmm. or anything temporary. It 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 does come from the seed that He gives us, and then we develop it from there. So from there, going to kindness. Kindness is a hard one in the world today too, don't you think? Yeah. People yeah. are pretty pretty crude and rude today. Somebody told me recently said you need to you need to do a seminar just on manners. Mm. Yeah. I mean it's like True. people out in the world today just they are so they just don't have manners. I mean some of the stories that people tell me who work with the the public, I mean a couple of my granddaughters work at at a fast food restaurant and they said you would not believe the way people can act. If you just don't give them enough ketchup packets, yeah, it's oh, wow. like yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like every, people are just ready to explode, and just it's not that hard to be a little bit kind to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think oh. yeah, I think kindness is a lost art somewhat because even though it's a fruit, but I'm saying it's just it's kind of lost in this culture because we we're used to getting things quickly. Yeah, mm-hmm. like this is like a very fast paced world, and so that's where the I think a lot of patience lacks and a lot mm-hmm. of kindness because everybody's just on the go. And mm-hmm. so one thing that I, I tried to keep instilling in my mm-hmm. daughter just 
be kind. Like, yeah. say thank you. Say right. please. Those mm-hmm. are like lost things that I don't think. And I grew up in a time, my parents, if I didn't say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, <laughs> yes, sir, no, sir, to any adult, you know, like I would get in trouble. And so I raised my daughter the same way. She still says it. Now people get offended because they don't want, you think I'm old? Like, it's no, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to respect, you know, like, but I think that just that art of kindness, like I still do it. I don't care. I'm like, thank you. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. I just, it's just kindness. Mm-hmm. It's just being gentle and kind. Yeah. You know? I think joy comes from being thankful too. Yes. I really believe that if you, if, if you're having a cranky day and you're unhappy, you're probably unhappy because you're thinking about what you don't have mm-hmm. and what people are not doing for you. Mm-hmm. But if you turn it around and, I mean, I try to do this every morning. I thank God for several different things that, you know, are pretty ordinary things. This mm-hmm. morning I got to turn my fireplace on because it was a little bit cool outside and I love my fireplace, so I thank God that I had a fireplace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you, if you keep your mind on what you do have, mm-hmm. you can be happy. But I, I heard something the other day that I read this that I thought it was really, really good. You know, maturity, growing up in God, which you have to do in order to display these fruit, it takes going through some hard stuff. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, that's just where we grow. Mm-hmm. And this man said he was talking to his father who was elderly and he said son i've learned that you can you can never be really happy until you've had plenty of reasons to be sad yeah. wow yeah. yeah that's true i mean hey, if you think about that that's really deep yes. mm-hmm. because when you when you've been hurt mm-hmm. i think that's when you stop hurting people mm-hmm. like you said you've been so much nicer to people mm-hmm. but it's because you went through a year of real pain. Yeah. And when we haven't had that, we're not sensitive to what other yeah. people are going through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One thing I love about joy, I think it connects really well to peace mm-hmm. because we can be going through something terrible and traumatic and whatever it is, but you can still have joy because we have the peace to know that God's taking care of it. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean my circumstance is great, mm-hmm. but... To me, I can feel that joy, and sometimes I wonder, like, Aaron, why are you so why are you smiling right now? You should be a, you should be crying, but I know that God's taking care of it. So it's like an unspeakable joy yeah. because I have that yeah. peace. You know, I think they work together. Yeah, and healthy. there's something beautiful about the fact that the Bible tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength, mm-hmm. and we don't often connect yeah. joy with being strong. Mm-hmm. But the that joy verse. of the Lord is something that gives us mm-hmm. strength. That's yeah. incredible. Well, it joy- does feel like a weapon, like you're exactly. fighting back. Exactly. And if Sorry. joy is no, if joy is the opposite of sadness, then that makes a lot of sense to me because I've been sad. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, and I, when I'm sad, like I don't, I'm wimpy. You don't feel strong, I'm, right? No. Yeah, at like, that time, yeah. Like when you're sad, it, it's easy to not feel mm-hmm. strong. Yeah. But so if the opposite of sadness is joy, then that makes so much much sense to me. Like yeah. just getting up like I remember growing up we would sing like the, the like if you need joy you can leap for it. Like we used to sing that <laughs> all the fun. time. You know, and so like so honestly I, I I still use that to this day. If I'm really feeling low, I'll just get up and like start jumping around like acting silly or like or think of something Dance it out. Or just make my heart <laughs> Leap like something that, and that's where gratitude comes in. Yeah. Where, you know, like just think of something that'll give you joy, and you do feel strength from that. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. take away the issue, right. but it definitely makes you not feel so wimpy. Kind of refocuses yeah. you too. Yeah. On, on Jesus. Well, really, when the devil comes against us and gives us trials and tribulations and problems, he's really not after whatever it is he's trying to take away from you. He's after your joy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he knows mm-hmm. that's the way to get it. Mm-hmm. Joy is extremely important. And this may sound like something that people think, no, that wouldn't work. But you can actually make your mind up in the morning. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be joyful today. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have a good day. I'm going to be happy with what God's given me. I'm going to be content. Because in Colossians 3, it says, set your mind and keep it set on things mm-hmm. that are above. So the thoughts that you have early in the morning sometimes set you up for the whole rest of the day. Yeah, that's why the enemy makes a bid for your thoughts yeah. sometimes before your feet ever hit the floor. Yeah. And so I've kind of learned over 45 years, it's a long time. I mean, I was so stupid in the beginning. And uh, 
but I've learned over 45 years that the Word of God actually will work if you work it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you do what it says, so set your mind and keep it set on things that are above, and that doesn't mean sit around and think about heaven all day, but it means to think of the things that God would mm. want you to do, but you have to do that. Mm -hmm. So you can take a little time before you ever get out of bed in the morning and think, okay, Lord, I love you. Thank you for another day. I'm going to be joyful today. I'm going to walk in love today. I need your help. I can't do it without you, but it how many people wake up and the first thing they think about is who they're mad at and what somebody did sure. to them yesterday that, yeah. you know, they're irritated about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I like this verse um, talking about kindness. Be kind to one another, tender heart, tenderhearted and forgiving. Because when there are a lot of different ways you can be kind, right? You can be kind in endless ways. But tenderhearted is something that, that really speaks to me about kindness. Mm -hmm. It's le keeping our hearts soft even when the world is hard, even when the pain around us makes us feel mm -hmm. self-protective. Right. And so kindness can only come when we keep our heart tender, and that comes from forgiveness. So yeah. it kind of ties together with what you're saying about that first thought in the morning can't be who I'm mad at, right? or you're not waking up with a tender heart, and right. kindness is not going to flow out of that. Well, and like Jay talked about how much kinder she is now, and it's because you had a good dose of... I got a beat the, now. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to get that hardness beat out of you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, God never is trying to be mean to us, but I, I'm going to do a speaking engagement later this week, and I'm going to teach on uh, the raising of Lazarus from the dead, but I'm the main thing I'm after is I love the part where it says that Jesus knew that Lazarus was sick. So because he loved him, he waited two more days hmm. until he went. Now, I mean, right. it doesn't. It no, it doesn't. Seem no, right. see, it's like <laughs> you, we got to pay attention to that. Because he loved him, mm -hmm. he didn't go help him. <laughs> yeah, and so that, <laughs> and see why? because why did he do that? I don't like it <laughs> because there was there was something deeper. Yeah, he was easier. after. There was a greater lesson that he wanted to teach Mary and Martha. Now, you know, I tend to be a rescuer, mm -hmm. so I would have wanted to ran real fast and yeah. rescued poor yeah. Lazarus. But how many people rescue their kids and they think they're helping them? Sure, and really, what they're doing is just enabling them to keep the bad behavior yeah, that yeah. they have. That just shows so. the self-control that Jesus had, too, because of how much he loves us. Yes, as a parent, you want to run to your kid, but he knew what was better for them. Right. Hold back. Oh, that's and true. Man, that's and Martha both were, Lord, why, if you would have yeah. been here, why weren't you here? Why, why did you let me go through this? And, uh, you know, the Bible says you're to thank God in things, but it also says you're to thank God for everything. Now, let me tell you, that's a whole nother level. Yeah, I know. that's awesome. When you start thanking us, I mean, think everything about Everything, huh? no. Think Ooh. about that, yeah. Thank God <laughs> for everything. And I've been trying that. And How's it's, it going? It, well, well, it's going. <laughs> We're not to your level yet, so. <laughs> but it's like, I'm really, I want to, I don't want to just study the word. I really want to take it seriously yeah, yeah. and try that. it all out. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I love it's that. It's like, so if I'm supposed to thank God for things, it doesn't make any sense to me, mm -mm. but I, okay, God, I thank you for that blow up we had in the family. And uh, mm -hmm. I believe the reason why we can thank God for things is because we do believe that God can work something good right. out of them and he can work something good in us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. just cannot become what God wants you to be if everything in your life is cushy. And that's how we learn these other two, right? Faithfulness. Faith, we learn the faithfulness of God Sticking with stuff. by seeing it happen, mm -hmm. um, goodness. But I, I think we need to skip over goodness and faithfulness, if that's okay with you guys, <laughs> only because there's so much to talk about with self-control. Oh. No, I prefer the other two. Thank you <laughs> yeah. for the offer. Okay, anything you guys want to say about goodness and faithfulness before we move on to self-control? No, they're great. We probably need the rest of the time for self-control. Yeah. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this, though, though with yeah. faithfulness, like being consistent, 
that's something that I'm like that I that a part of my self love journey. Yeah, just mm-hmm. being consistent, like being faithful. Like God said, if you know if you're faithful over few, He'll make you ruler over much. So, like just learning how to be more faithful and consistent um, with things is it's, it's so helping hugely me. important. Yeah, hugely important. So, yeah. Yeah. So it takes self control to do that. But yeah. Exactly. Da-da. Yeah. <laughs> nice transition. <Da-da. laughs> Thank you. So we should know we're headed in the wrong direction when we hear ourselves say, I know I should do this, but. Uh, yeah. But. I know I shouldn't do this, but. I know I shouldn't talk about this, but. What we're really saying is, I know what's right to do, but I'm not going to use any self control to oh, do ouch. it. Oh, I had yep. one. I had one of these last week. And it was something that someone did. And it wasn't a terrible deal. It was, it was annoying. But I knew in my heart that God did not want me to talk about it. He did not want me to tell anybody about it. And that was one of the hardest self-control things I can remember having in a long time <laughs> because I just wanted to talk about it. I, I just I wanted to tell my husband. I wanted to tell my daughters. I, do you know what this person did? And, and it was a huge factor of self-control. Nobody knew it was really just between me and God. I totally agree with you. That's one of the hardest things in the it world is. Is to not tell anybody yep yeah what somebody did to you i've had that test mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not many easy. times yeah so anyway that was that was one of those self-control hard things that i had to deal with i sat in the car in my garage like more times than i can probably count <laughs> like fuming angry at whatever the situation was so badly wanting to pick up the phone and call a friend to just tell about whatever just happened the person did to me or whatever yeah and so strong, like, and feel the Holy Spirit saying, do not pick up that phone. I can hear your teaching in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> do not pick up that phone. Go. What do you say? Go to the throne, not the phone? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'll just sit my car until I am ready to get out without making it that choice. Because I know <laughs> once I do that, I'm not going to go back to him. I'm not going to go him being the Lord and talk to him about it. I'm going to move on with my friend and we're going to vent and... Yeah. Feel better that way. So I used to so work hard. for somebody that was really not very nice, and uh, so there was a lot of office, you know. Do, 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 uh-huh. And God really dealt with me about not being part of that, you know. Not don't don't talk about him. But I would go home and talk to Dave. Hmm. And one day the Lord said, "It's not. It's not a matter of who you're talking to. It's the words that do the damage." Yeah. Oh. And so see, when we're putting those words out yeah. there, those are words then that the enemy can turn around and use against us. That's why it's so important That's to, huge. to cover people. Yeah. Love covers <laughs> uh, yeah. a multitude of sins. And this was so. not something that that person would have ever known that I said. Yeah. Because that wasn't the point. It wasn't about hurting that person like you're saying. But it God was, was having you cover them. Yes. Well, and, you know, you got the whole thing with Noah and his sons when his, when his one son, when he got drunk and lay in his tent naked and his one son went in and saw him and ran back out and mm-hmm. told the other two brothers. And the other two brothers walked in backwards mm-hmm. with a cover mm-hmm. and covered his mm-hmm. nakedness. Mm-hmm. And the son who uncovered him got a curse, and the other two got a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And it's funny how self-control, like in this season for me, uh, like I'll be 40 in a little bit. So I'm doing like this 40-day fast of sorts you know, just to get towards it. And one of the things in the four day fast is like me working on not trying to fix stuff. Like, cause I'm, I, I love, even, like I've talked about this before, but I love a good resolve, mm-hmm. you know, like even in music, you know, da, 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 da. No, you know, like, <laughs> like don't end leave it. us hanging. You know, like end it, you know. Yeah. And so even if there's a, if there's a, you know, something, some something tense going on with me and someone, like I want to be like, okay, are you good? Okay, like you know, I always want to do that. And so even with my daughter, like she's 18, and honey, she's doing her, she's grown, I guess, you know. So I guess. and I just want to like, you know, touch and and ask questions. And what God is teaching me right now is like, I, I, I don't. Like, mm-hmm. and so it's a lot of this time is me being hands off, hands off of others and hands on with me. 
<laughs> like, and that's so that's I'm not used to that. I'm I li- I've lived the opposite way. You know, <laughs> I'm like all my life I've lived hands on everybody else and don't touch me. Like, you know, so like it, that's the self control of not having that resolve and trusting that God's gonna fix it and He's gonna yeah. He's gonna resolve it in His time whenever that is. Two days later, maybe. You and know, when you've lived that way for forty years. Yeah. It's a lot of self control to start to change yeah. some of those little things that God's asking us to work on. Yeah, because lo- a lot of the fixing things that I thought I did, I thought God told me to fix. And He probably did some well, of them, but some of them. Maybe not all of them. <laughs> <laughs> some of them. But yeah. I mean, but the mentality of thinking that, okay, all this stuff that I was fixing, you know, and resolving, like, I thought mm-hmm. that was God, but now God's telling me, yeah. keep your hands off in this particular time frame. Yeah. And just really focus on you. Work work on cultivating your fruit. Work on cultivating the things that I've told you to do for you. So it's hard. I have to I, remember that we all still have a flesh. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. We sure do. And yeah. it's it's never going to want to do the right thing. Now if you do the right thing enough, long enough, then it will finally shut up. Mm-hmm. Like my husband has worked out for sixty some odd years. And so, of course, he looks amazing. People, oh, I wish I looked like Dave. Well, he didn't get it wishing. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. he got it through self control. I never hear him say, I don't feel like working out. I don't want to work out today. Even if he felt that way, he wouldn't say anything. He would just go and do it. But it's because he's done it so mm-hmm. long. Mm-hmm. And so, some of these things, like that, are hard areas that are hard to have self control in. We have to realize that our flesh is going to fight against us until it's completely dead. And the only way you kill it in an area, which the Bible does say, kill the flesh, in Colossians, in the Amplified Bible, yeah. it, the only way you can do that is you can kill anything if you don't feed it. Yeah. But every time you give in to it, you feed it. Mm-hmm. And the only way you ever can get free from it is to not feed it anymore, and then it finally loses its strength. God, hmm. It brushes up against your pride, though. To, just to to not say something when you know you should, or to to the what you're doing with your daughter and holding mm-hmm. back when you know the answers yeah. is yeah. so yeah. it feels so much like a blow to the pride when you know the answer and I I can help you and I can make this all right and to not is it's hard mm-hmm. yeah but it, it is that starvation theory that you're talking yeah. about I think that's a great way to describe it, it the mm-hmm. the more I can go without sugar the less I want the sugar. That's exactly right. And it's the same way in the other areas of our life. And when we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, I think we see how all of these things in our life come together and how they they feed each other with the good things, the fruit, and and starve the bad things in our life. Like if you look at um, 2 Timothy 1.7, it says, For God did not give us a spirit of fear, mm-hmm. but of power and of love and of self-control. Right. Isn't and it interesting that self-control is in exactly. there? Exactly. <laughs> self-control is one of those things that defeats fear. Right. That's, that's, that's mind-blowing to me. Yeah. I think it's interesting because I've learned that scripture so many times that it was of a, in a sound mind. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just, but a sound yeah. mind is self control. The but, Amplified Bible brings that out. Exactly. That it's, that it's, but that's what I'm saying. Like that. Like just if you're thinking, thinking properly, it's about it's a it's a, yeah. Yeah, your self control yeah. in your mind. Well, right. you're thinking yeah. properly. You're thinking. I don't feel like doing this, but I know hmm. what I should do, mm-hmm. and so I'm going to do with God's help what I should do, not what I feel like doing. And your flesh is going to have a fit. It's just mm-hmm. like a little baby when you take its pacifier. It'll scream and. Yell and, you know, give me my sugar, give me whatever it is. <laughs> but every time you don't feed it, and that was always really helpful to me. Every time you don't feed it, yeah. it gets a little bit weaker. Mm-hmm. So just I, I have to share weaker. this story since you brought up pacifiers. <laughs> because we were just with our grandson this week, and his mom is starting to wean him from the binky, the pacifier. And so the new rule is the binky stays in the bed. Mm-hmm. So he can have it at nap time and at bedtime, but the binky has to stay in the bed. Well, I, I got him up from his nap one time. I pulled the pacifier out of his mouth. I put it down, and I turned around, and it was in his mouth again. I, I was like, 
what happened? How did he do that? <laughs> He's like a little magician. And so the next day, I really watched to see what he did. And when I got him up, he had a pacifier in his mouth and two in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as I pulled one out, he just popped another one in. And he did that three times, just popped another one in. And he had a whole pile of them in his bed that he was hoarding. And that's how we well, are. we're kind of like that. We've got we our are. backups. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that's how we are, especially with self-control. We can find all sorts of ways to manipulate it to get what we want. Yes. It's hard to let go of some things yeah. in our world. You know, the bottom line is, I was just sitting here thinking, a Christian, every person who's listening or watching who is a Christian, our whole goal should be to please God every day. Mm -hmm. It's not about us, but to please God every day, knowing that if we do that, then he can use us to bring other people into the kingdom. Mm. Yeah. If we didn't have a purpose here, when we're born again, he would just bring us up to heaven and we could yeah. bypass all this. Mm-hmm. But God works through people, but not fleshly people. You can't, mm. back in the Old Testament, there was never any any anointing oil put on the, put on the flesh. Mm. You can't anoint the flesh. You can only anoint the spirit. Mm. So Joyce, give us, give us a, a word of encouragement as we close to... Um, continue to develop the fruit of spirit in our life? Okay, well, I think I would I would focus on love and self-control. Let's, let's just take those two out of nine. Let's just take those two and realize that every time God wants you to do the right thing, the devil's going to try to get you to do the wrong thing. But keep in mind that principle that every time you say yes to God and no to the enemy, or yes to the Spirit and no to the flesh. In the beginning, it's really hard. It's like, say, if you, if you decide to stop, t- you're, you're not going to talk bad about people anymore. Like, you, you had your one situation. Mm-hmm. So let's just say you decide, I'm going to live like that. <laughs> okay, well, in the beginning, it is going to be so gut-wrenchingly hard Mm -hmm. and you'll fail a number of times that's why you got to stick with stuff you know stick with stuff and then just keep at it and keep at it and keep at it until that thing no longer has control over you and then i can promise you god will give you a new assignment Mm -hmm. so really we're never going to be perfected to where god doesn't need to deal with us and don't don't get your panties in a bunch when God deals with you. Just be thankful that he cares enough about you to not leave you the way that you are. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll all be better off for it. It won't always be real comfortable along the way, especially when our panties do get in a bunch. Because right. that is not comfortable. It. It's, it's so, cool. yeah. It's embarrassing to pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's an excellent point. The, the more that we starve... Those those needs, those yeah. the, the fleshly desire, the more the fruit of the spirit can grow in our lives. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Really helpful stuff. So we want to tell you that we have a free resource for you so that you can find out more about the difference between the fruit and the gifts that we've been talking about. It's called Understanding Gifts Versus Fruit. It's an, a free audio download. So if you go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out, you can grab that. You can also watch past episodes. Um, you can head over to YouTube to watch too. Um, subscribe. Make sure that you don't miss any episodes. Tell your friends about it. And we are so glad that you were here with us. We... We have a lot of fruit that we can all develop together in our lives, and it just gives us more and more to talk about. There's always a story to share. (laughs) That's right. Always. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you all. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Go get today's free resource at joycemeyer.org slash talkitout. 